Hi guys, welcome back to Beauty Within. We have a super, super exciting episode because we want to kick off what we're going to name the Decium Week. Decium, otherwise known as the Abnormal Beauty Company. And this is a skincare brand that you guys all love, you rave about, you ask us endless questions about. And we actually had the special opportunity to meet their team members and really learn more about what they stand for and everything, especially during these times. I think it's more than important to recognize these values. So we have this special and honorary guest, Nafisa, who is the... <laughs> I'm just gonna throw it over to you to introduce yourself because I've tried so many times to remember the title. But could you please share with us what you do for Decium, with the Ordinaries brands, um, and just tell us a little bit about it. My official title is Science Communications Associate Manager. We're part of a bigger team uh, called the Scientific Team. And essentially our primary role is to try to communicate the science behind our products, the technologies, or the concepts in a much more digestible format for our audience to understand and also to learn alongside with us. As you guys have realized, there's a lot of chemical sounding ingredients, names and products. It can all get a little bit confusing, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And it's all part of science. There's always something new to learn. There's always going to be a uh, new concept or a new phrase or a new term. One of them being my, my title. <laughs> so pivoting off that, I think Decium and What Beauty Within does is try to just offer you guys as much information as possible in the most simple, fun way. So today we gathered the top three ingredients, I guess you would say, vitamin C, niacinamide, and the retinoid family or retinol family. And you guys have a bunch of products in these categories, which I think we would love to pick your brain, get into the nitty gritty details, <laughs> and just ask the questions that our community has asked us. And we think what better person than to you know, share with us her knowledge than you. <laughs> and we will do a giveaway at the end of this video so Nafisa can share with you guys what you'll be getting there. So let's just get into it. Alrighty, he's going in and kicking it off with probably one of the most favorited ingredient right now, and it's niacinamide or vitamin B3. So I'm gonna let Nafisa share a little bit about why it might be so popular, how it really benefits the skin, and where we can see it in the products. Absolutely, so as you said, Paul, I mean, niacinamide is one of the most beloved uh, ingredients within skincare right now, uh, and as it should be. It's probably the most primary benefit that people are in love with is the fact that it helps with uh, congested skin. So for people who currently experience a lot of oily skin or visible shine, niacinamide is absolutely perfect for that because it helps to clear congestion, it helps to balance your sebum production, and it also helps to sort of minimize the visibility of enlarged pores. It's like a superstar ingredient that can that kind of does it all. It's one of those ingredients that has been heavily researched for a long time. And it's not just in the aspect of congested skin, but also its other benefits in terms of um, addressing signs of age, addressing texture irregularities that may um, arise due to other skin conditions. For example, a common one would be any texture irregularities as a result of suffering from acne. A lot of people will tend to use niacinamide because it's not invasive and it is one of those ingredients of where it sort of takes its time to create the results but in a, in a way of where it wouldn't induce any sort of like very fast skin resurfacing or um, anything like that. So it is very well tolerated by a wide majority of people and I think that also contributes to its popularity as well. Because there are a lot of questions about how to properly use the product and I think the top one is how would you say to people that they can approach using niacinamide with vitamin C? Vitamin C again, it's one of those uh, very well studied ingredients within cosmetic industry. It's been heavily researched in terms of its benefits for addressing signs of aging, for uneven skin tone, also building up the uh, density of the skin in terms of increasing its strength, smoothing out the surface. So there's a lot of goodness uh, when it comes to vitamin C. However, there is controversy in terms of combining niacinamide with vitamin C, and you'll find that there's a lot of different opinions within the industry and also within users as well. So we do take that into consideration alongside the research that is out there in terms of the combination of the two together. So 
my best advice for people who want to reap the benefits of both ingredients, even if you are not a first time user of both, I believe the best practice it would be to alternate between the two. And then see how your skin reacts. Yes. So I want to ask you maybe a little bit about formulation. Like what does the zinc help with in this niacinamide concoction of serum? That's a great question actually. We get that question all the time. So. The way that I like to explain it is, think of Batman and Robin. A lot of people will question, well, what is the point of Robin if you already have Batman? But then the alternative <laughs> to that is, well, what's the bad thing about having both? Both have their individual benefits. I mean, zinc also helps with clearing out skin congestion as well. So the combination of both is only simply to amplify that effect within the skin as well. It's not to say that the effects of niacinamide is dependent on zinc or vice versa. It's just that by combining the two together, you do get a really great package. So Batman and Robin can help save the world. Zinc and niacinamide can help save congested skin. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I love that analogy. I think it always makes it easier to understand when like you paint a mental picture of it. Absolutely. I'm all for simplicity. You know, we don't need complications. Yes. Oh my gosh. So speaking of simplicity, so there's another question um, in terms of layering. Is it okay to use the ordinary niacinamide 10% and zinc together at the same time with the ordinary 7% glycolic acid toner? That is a, a great example of um, taking into consideration the activity of the ingredients or the, the, the powerful or the hero ingredients together. Similar to the niacinamide and the vitamin C, there is also a little bit of conspicuency between uh, what is the actual answer? Is there a conflict? Is there not a conflict? But our primary concern is to take into consideration the skin tolerance of the user. So if you're a person who's already using the glycolic acid toner and you're already probably using it in the evening, so we'd recommend to use the niacinamide in the morning and then ultimately change with the uh, glycolic acid serum uh, in the evening. And what are some things that if people were to double into the powder that maybe they should be aware of? Um, because I think it might seem a little intimidating at first. It's like, is this too little? Is it too much? How do I know like how to kind of formulate it? Because you are essentially acting as your own chemist at that point. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what? Let's be honest. Sometimes one can get carried away within uh, that experience. If you're anything like me, you're like, <laughs> um, so it, it is a great point that you make. To be honest, it's very much down to what is currently within your skincare routine. So for example, if you are in love with a moisturizer that you're using, it's as simple as just incorporating it within the moisturizer. So you can just put a little dab on the palm of your hands and then uh, dip your finger, get a little bit of the powder and mix it in. And then once it's dissolved, you can apply it on. If you are a serum type of person, a hyaluronic acid up serum is great. Um, in terms of getting that consistency, it's actually really great due to the fact that it's, it's clear so you can actually tell uh, when the powder has dissolved right away and in comparison to a cream in terms of the texture that you are looking to get the powder should dissolve within your chosen base very quickly if it is taking time then maybe you should choose a different suitable base that could get you that uh, texture that you want i want to know your tips to prevent any sort of like textural feeling because you know serums aren't supposed to leave a super sticky feeling but some people have said you know that has happened so i'm just wondering what they might be doing wrong or how they can avoid um you know overdoing it and leading to things like peeling and all that stuff so the way that i I personally do it and I recommend for people to do whenever they ask me is pretend that whenever you're introducing a product or putting a regimen together you're getting to know new friends you want to get to know what they like what they don't like um, what are your similarities and differences exact same thing with your skincare products so for example if you have picked out three or four serums uh, let's say three serums uh, for argument's sake and you are trying to see which one to layer how about you and you try them on individually familiarize yourself with the texture so that you know um, what kind of feeling you ultimately want at the end once you've layered all three. The next thing is we generally tend to uh, recommend to apply from thinnest to thickest texture. So uh, let's say if you have a, a water-based serum and then you have an emulsion or cream, uh, I would personally recommend to apply the water-based serum first due to its thin consistency and then applying and topping it off with your uh, with your cream or your moisturizer or emulsion. So just spacing it out, taking the time to observe, to be mindful of what you're actually putting on and then see how it goes from there for future steps. Absolutely. I mean, don't get me wrong, it could also be complicated because 
depending on the formulation type as well. So let's say, for example, if the cream that you are applying is in oil and water or water and oil, that would actually um, make a difference in terms of the overall effect after you've layered on the products. Because depending on the type of emulsion, that could also ultimately affect how the serum, whether it's an oil-based serum or a water-based serum, would layer on on top. So some people may then experience the pilling because of the formulation type itself, as opposed to um, them applying too much or too little. And I just want to um, comment a little bit about like the 10%. I think people can easily get caught up in numbers. They think the higher the better. So what would you say about like, you know, 2%, 5% niacinamide, 10% and anything above? <laughs> that is a great question and I think it's it's a topic that is going to forever take precedence in because there's always that notion that the more the better, right? But that isn't, isn't necessarily the case. I think what we need to remind ourselves is, number one, research is there for a reason, right? So the important question is to know that whatever percentage it's at, it is actually going to bring the intended benefits that we are, are looking for. So. In terms of niacinamide specifically, um, according to all the scientific literature that is out there that we've personally looked into, the recorded minimum uh, efficacious concentration is somewhere around 2.5% is where they've recorded in the clinical trial seeing any, any benefits within the volunteers that took place. In terms of answering the question as to why 10% is because we feel at that percentage it is you know, going to bring about um, efficacious results in a you know a suitable period of time. But then at the same time, given the format that we offer it, and we also have that option for people to dilute it with other serums that they would want to combine it with, given that they don't conflict. So it always just comes down to how well you know your skin and then pinpointing what it is that you actually need because it's not about, you know, like layering so many different things on all the time. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think what I love about skincare in general is that there is no right or wrong in terms of trying to get it right. You know, it, it's always going to be an evolving um, journey for you and it's always going to be a, a journey of where you're going to find out new things and learn new things about your skincare. And the skin changes, right? Um, we as human beings we grow not just in terms of age but also in terms of our organs and skin being one of them so it is absolutely fine for you to switch up your skincare routine it's absolutely fine for you to continue using the same products if it's been working for you and you're really happy with the results why not <laughs> And we just want to let you know that Desium is working very hard to concoct many more formulations with niacinamide. <laughs> Alrighties, so jumping into another cult favorite, vitamin C. <laughs> so vitamin C is another one of those really well-researched potent antioxidants that offer the skin so many benefits like from brightening to anti-aging so could you tell us how it works on the skin why it's so good why like the ordinary and all the brands also have a bunch of different formulations from water based ones to oil based ones go for it nafisa <laughs> all right so uh, vitamin C is one of my favorite, favorite products because of how diverse it is in terms of its benefits and the way that it works within the skin. So not to get too technical, I think the best way for me to describe how it works is that once it's applied on the skin, there are multiple pathways that utilize it for various reasons. In terms of what are the outcomes of, of those uh, multiple pathways being there and being utilized, that's where the multiple benefits come about. So you have your antioxidant support, you have your uh, uneven skin tone being addressed. You have your signs of aging being addressed. Combining all of that together and attributing that to vitamin C, I believe is amazing. And then to your note about the different formats and the different types of formulations that it can uh, be included in, that is also one of the main reasons why I love it. For example, within the uh, the ordinary portfolio of vitamin C serums, we do have our oil-based serum. We have uh, a water-based serum uh, that util both utilize uh, vitamin C derivatives. Uh, we have vitamin C powder where you just get the full goodness of, of the powder itself raw right to you. And then you also have uh, the suspensions. So. I think just having that vitamin C portfolio within the ordinary is just a testament to just how diverse the ingredient is. What would you suggest is best for like a beginner's entry into vitamin C if they haven't ever used it before? What's the best entry way in the portfolio of vitamin C? I would say the best way is to go into it with an open mind and to try and just have fun with it. So if you're looking for a, a DIY experience, um, the powder is great because you could uh, physically adjust the concentration 
that you want. So if you are a, a new beginner, it's a little tiny amount than what is recommended within the directions. If you want uh, an all-rounder overall ready serum good to use, then you have the ascorbic acid 8% plus alpha arbutin 2%. And that also combines the additional ingredient of alpha arbutin to help address the uneven skin tone aspect more. If you are already a, um, a familiar user of vitamin C, then you can actually go up to uh, higher concentrations. So for example, the vitamin C uh, the 23% uh, suspension or the 30% suspension. For someone who is a new user, they might um, find the tingling experience a little bit too much. So I would either recommend starting with the powder where you're able to adjust the amount or starting with the ascorbic acid 8% uh, serum. Okay, so that's the ordinary alternatives, but Neon also offers so many other great products and it's it's got like long-term health of skincare in focus. So can you like suggest us some products from Neon because we're so excited about that brand as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I personally love Neod as well, not only because of the amount of technologies that they have, but also the, the, the product concepts as well. I would personally recommend checking out uh, Repigment and also checking out uh, Non-Acid Acid Precursor. They are formulated in such an incredible way to address um, uneven skin tone in multiple different uh, pathways and in multiple different uh, technologies. So if you are someone who has already tried and you've come to the conclusion that vitamin C is a bit too much your skin the non-acid acid precursor is a really great alternative um, even for people who are um, acid users who are looking for an alternative um, to address uneven skin tone and overall skin radiance this is your guy same thing with repigment specific to um, uneven skin tone it's a fabulous fabulous product if they realize they tried vitamin c they their skin doesn't react well to it what's a similar ingredient they can use that offers very similar benefits i would recommend exploring um alpha arbutin uh, because alpha arbutin is really great at addressing uneven skin tone. It is not an ingredient that is commonly associated with experiencing a tingling effect or anything like that on the skin. So let's move it along to our last and final ingredient is retinols and retinoids and the vitamin A family. I think retinol as a topic is very confusing because there's also a lot of different discussions about it you know it's known for its drying kind of effects if used maybe like not the best way so can you tell us a little bit about vitamin a and how it helps the skin and why it gives those side effects potentially i love vitamin a i mean similar to the reasons why i love uh, vitamin c it's the exact same thing with vitamin a it's a huge diverse family of different uh types and derivatives and they also vary in terms of their effects on the skin. So you have a type of vitamin A that is um, prescription only. And then you have the type of vitamin A that you can actually um, order online and you can utilize. But in terms of the overall effect, the intended effects are all the same, which is to try to achieve a more smoother skin texture, a more radiant skin. If you're addressing signs of aging, it's a great, great cosmetic uh, ingredient to utilize. For people who um, generally tend to have sensitive uh, skin, in addition to people who have compromised uh, or broken skin, we definitely do not recommend you guys to utilize retinol in any way due to its um, potency. So on the Ordinary's products, we see um, you guys have Grand Active Retinoid 2% in Squalane. So could you tell us a little bit about the Grand Active component because that's something that we don't usually see and then is retinol 2% what does that mean for the skin and why is it formulated with Squalane? The reason for having those two combined is not only just to read the benefits of the Grand Active Retinoid but Squalane in itself is a great great ingredient overall in terms of supporting skin hydration, giving the skin a more moisturized comfortable feeling. The Grand Active Retinoid is a great uh, retinoid in terms of the efficacy that it brings within the skin, but also in terms of how it is tolerated within the skin. A lot of people tend to generally complain about the fact that when utilizing retinol, their skin tends to suffer a little bit of skin redness. So Grand Active Retinoid is a great alternative. And I think one really important note to make is if you're like me, you just want to jump ship and get right to the end of where you have this beautiful radiant skin. Um, but when it comes to which you do, by the way, let's just be real. <laughs> Thank you, so do you. 
<laughs> but I think it's really important to take into consideration uh, the importance of developing skin tolerance. Um, the reason for that is because by allowing your skin to adjust in its own time, it will help avoid the chances of you developing any skin irritation or um, sensitivities to the ingredient or the formula itself. So if you are a first time user, start from low, work your way up. Yeah, because I have been those people that was like 1% retinol, it doesn't sound like much. And then I was like, oh my God, this is painful. What happened? <laughs> so let's go into some questions about retinol because there are a few. This question has to do with what retinols work well together with, which is, you know, a, a huge subject matter. Let's just go, how do I add a retinol 0.5% into my PM routine? In order to know how it would fit, we need to take into consideration what you currently are using in the PM routine. So let's say if your PM routine consists of using a cleanser to wash your face and then uh, utilizing a hydrating serum and then the retinol, uh, the retinoid would come right after that. If you are not using a, a hydrating serum or you incorporated a cream afterwards, then I would recommend to apply the cream at the end to seal that goodness in and just follow the guidelines of uh, thinnest to thickest consistency in terms of texture. Can a teenager introduce a retinoid into their routine for small acne and such? And if so, which do you recommend? I think this is a very popular like realm of questions as well like kind of when is too early to start with retinol? I think it is a great topic to bring about because uh, you know skincare is becoming really popular with the younger demographic but one thing that I currently see commonly done is neglecting the fact that you know, if you are a teenager, your skin is currently going through a lot of changes. So what might work for a 20 something year old might not necessarily be the same experience for you as a teenager. What I would highly recommend is to take a step back and really define what your primary skin concerns are. If it is a case of texture irregularities, there are alternatives that are really great and really efficacious and just the same, but you don't have that um, high strength aspect to it. And we know you guys have a ton of more questions, but I think these were the ones that just stood out the most as to the repetition that we kept seeing. So we hope we answered your questions and we really wanted to give back to you guys. So we decided the Ordinary Daily Set is probably one of the greatest starter packs <laughs> that you guys have been able to offer because it includes three awesome products. It's got the Squalling Cleanser, the Hyaluronic Acid, and the uh, Moisturizing Factors. I love this set because of its simplicity. So this set is particularly suitable for someone who is very new to the world of skincare routines. Um, it's also really suitable for someone who's looking for a very simple yet effective routine in terms of just addressing your primary concern of skin hydration. Yes, love it. So we're so excited to offer that to you 15 lucky winners so just check in our description box what you can do to enter that with skincare with anything personal there are a lot of questions naturally so Nafisa could you just share with us your online resources that Desium is offering for people who need a little bit more help and assistance yeah absolutely so um, we pride ourselves in making sure that we stand by our commitment to science first you know in order for us to be as transparent as possible we also need to be really real so in terms of research Resources and reaching out. We have our 24-7 uh, system within uh, Instagram. You can reach out to us there, dropping comments in our posts with your questions. But we also have the Desium at Home program that we currently have. So if you were to log on to the website, um, you can have a chat with our um, ambassadors who uh, are really, really lovely in terms of getting to know what your concerns are and walking you through to make sure that whatever recommendations that we are to give you, it is the best ones that are suited to your particular skin concerns. And just a last parting note, I think what Desium really stands for is something that's so rooted in what we all need to focus on, which is kindness. Kindness to ourselves, to those around us. So is there anything that you want to share with our audience? Because it's just the best time to be able to, you know, know that everyone is here together. And I think that unity, even though we do typically just talk about skincare, is so much more than that. It symbolizes many different things that we can tie together. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, I feel really grateful for being part of a company that recognizes that and that actually has 
you know, develop, we develop action steps in order to go about trying to make a change uh, and hopefully a lifelong change that would stick. The one thing that will always, always prevail is kindness, understanding, empathy, and more than anything, just standing by your words with action. And it's all about making sure that the action that you take is, is done with the right intent. Um, and it is done so in a way that hopefully the world becomes safer for everyone and not just for a specific group of people. And one thing that I really want to mention is everyone makes mistakes. Um, if you're a person who had a, a particular belief and you're coming to the realization that actually maybe this is not right or uh, maybe I have never thought about it in this way, it is absolutely fine to come to the realization that you had it wrong or it's fine to come to the realization that um, you didn't know it all. The important part is what are you going to do about it? So have the uh, difficult conversations, get comfortable with the uncomfortable um, and, and you know, stand in solidarity in order to make the world a better place for everyone. So thank you so much, Nafisa, for being on our episode. We are truly humbled that you were able to give us your time with everyone else at Desium. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really enjoyed this and I really hope that whatever information I shared will help uh, any and all of you. And like you said, if there's any questions or concerns that you uh, have in terms of our products or in terms of skincare in general, we love a good conversation anyway. So Profum, reach out to us and we can't wait to respond back. We will be seeing more Desium in the next episode. And until then, see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> Bye.